welcome uh, before i start up i would just like to uh, uh, say thank you for everyone uh, uh, making yourself available for this webinar on uh, uh, solidworks flow simulation uh, to design uh, for a better cooling systems uh, uh, let me introduce myself my name is uh, chetan uh, I am part of Beacon from last four years and taking care of the whole uh, simulation suit uh, uh, related to uh, SOLIDWORKS. So the today's agenda would be uh, giving a look at uh, how SOLIDWORKS flow simulation can help you in your everyday activities and uh, what basically the flow simulation mean or the CFD techniques mean uh, uh, who are not aware about it. So to start up, uh, I would like to uh, take you through a couple of uh, uh, modules available in SOLIDWORKS simulation. First of all, uh, what we call them as the SOLIDWORKS simulation products. One is the SOLIDWORKS simulation, what you can see to your left side, uh, which works on a finite element methodology. We also have a module for that. We, all, we have a module called SOLIDWORKS flow simulation, uh, which is on a, a CFD platform. So let us start up with the module for today that is SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation. So let us give a look at what basically uh, uh, SOLIDWORKS flow simulation is all about. Uh, we'll also try to understand uh, uh, what do we mean by a fluid flow analysis and why do we have to uh, invest in it. We also have to uh, go through a few real life examples solved. Uh, we also have a few uh, industry specific modules uh, followed by a small demonstration and then uh, a summarize of what we have uh, seen uh, uh, in, the, in the overall presentation for today. This would be the uh, agenda for the next uh, 30 minutes followed by. So basically uh, what do we mean by uh, fluid flow analysis is nothing but taking out uh, uh, a real fluid, real life fluid problems or heat transfer problems and then piling that piling it up and then putting up into into your computer into a virtual environment and then try solving it by means of a technique called cfd uh, is basically uh, related to uh, analysis of flow simulation so uh, who can basically get a huge benefit out of it is basically the engineers who are working related to uh, any flow of gas or liquids or any kind of heat transfers by means of uh, force methods or uh, natural methods can definitely get a great benefit uh, by using this technology. Uh, what are the advantages of using uh, uh, CFD techniques is basically to reduce your uh, uh, prototyping and uh, the experimental testing which can definitely you know lead uh, in a faster time to launch the product of course uh, uh, if you are working on any kind of uh, wind tunnel testings maybe uh, if you are into any kind of aerospace or automotive departments uh, or any product related to uh, uh, racing bicycles or something like that where you go for a, a huge uh, kind of wind tunnel testings can definitely uh, be uh, eliminated and it is definitely less expensive comparative to the, uh, the testing methods. Of course, we have a lot of ability to investigate more options like you know, what would be the output if I change a particular parameter like the velocity or uh, some, some minute change in the, in the design, maybe a minute change in the material properties or maybe minute change in the finishing of the, of the object, how it is going to you know, affect the overall output. Uh, there are definitely a lot of possibility to investigate you know, a lot of options. Of course, you have a, a more uh, a better way to visualize the outputs uh, in a much full, a colorful plots and a much, a much easier way to have an access to uh, give a look at the outputs at, uh, in detail related to the overall flow domain. Of course, you require a you know, very less manpower uh, because uh, you have to spend more time in uh, more. Uh, you have to spend more uh, manpower in uh, any kind of uh, you know, prototyping or testing conditions because you have to go for uh, the design, then the manufacturing, and then the setup for the whole uh, testing uh, equipment, and then put a lot of sensors and stuff. So you can avoid all such kind of uh, you know, manpower activities. Previously, uh, uh, flow simulation or CFD was basically uh, 
know, implemented in uh, later stage of the designs uh, to uh, especially to validate uh, uh, the designs whatever they have done but slowly the trend has been moved to uh, rather than implementing at the later stages of the later stages of the design they have started implementing at the initial phases of the design so that the effort uh, of the uh, engineers is minimized at the same time uh, the, the production is not uh, compromised so you can see the graph so that the implementation of uh, the cfd to help uh, avoid a lot of uh, uh, you know, activities have been you know uh, reduced in the product development timeline by you know minimizing the efforts so uh, to see to be very frank there are a lot of tools available in the tool in the market so why only solidworks flow simulation so i'll just go through a little bit of uh, a couple of examples on that uh, especially uh, uh, there has been a, a big uh, thinking in the, in the minds of engineers that you know cfd is a very complicated platform or a very complicated tool so there is always a huge barrier between uh, the design engineer and the, and the guy who works as a cfd uh, specialist so um, so there is a huge wall you know they they feel like uh, the CFD is a you know, pure uh, whole set of different technology and you know it's very complicated to work and uh, you know it is not a it is not a tool which is given to the design engineers you know, those kind of all kind of you know uh, thoughts have been you know uh, provoked into the minds of engineers from long back but uh, uh, this what SolidWorks flow simulation is trying to do is uh, to, to to eliminate this barrier between the design engineers and the and the CFD specialist. So uh, SolidWorks Flow Simulation wanted to uh, uh, implement such a way that uh, all the design engineers uh, have the uh, have the tools available to work on uh, at the very basic level of the designs, so that they can uh, definitely make much better products uh, and launch the products in a much faster way. So few examples, if I give a look at uh, uh, the SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation, if I relate it to a uh, few real life examples uh, solved in using SOLIDWORKS flow simulation. Uh, the, it, it can be applicable into a lot of industries. So like we can use it in uh, aerospace departments if you are working in any kind of aerodynamic applications. Not only in aerospace, we can also do it in any kind of other applications as well, uh, like automotives or any kind of uh, uh, commercial applications as well. Uh, we have electronics uh, module, especially related to electronic side. Uh, uh, we'll, we'll work on that in the coming slides. Give a look at how uh, electronics uh, cooling can be helpful to you. We, it can also be applicable to you know, HVAC room ventilation systems. Not only to room ventilation systems, it can be applicable to any kind of industries related to HVAC. Uh, how the flow is actually happening inside the, the room, whether the ventilator size, size provided is sufficient enough to you know, give me the, the better quality of air or not. So the application wise, it are too many. These are just few of them. These are just few of them. So these are the few applications. Uh, what are the capabilities we have in SolidWorks uh, flow simulation, what we call it as a free surface. This has been a new tool which has been implemented in uh, uh, SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation 2018. So we can basically find out how the uh, uh, things are going to work out on a, on, a, on a free surface level. This is one of the very good and powerful tools which have been implemented in SOLIDWORKS Flow Simulation uh, in 2018. We also have a capability to work with internal flows might be for uh, not only related to uh, valves but any kind of internal flows we can also work we can also work on internal flow analysis we can also work on any kind of uh, external flow analysis anything related to external flow analysis we also have a capability to work with uh, external flow analysis as well <coughs> sorry we also have a, a capability to uh, work with uh, compressible fluids, uh, any kind of compressible fluids uh, we can work on, uh, like uh, working on any high level Mach numbers uh, where we have a lot of compressible effects coming into the picture. So we can also work on compressible fluids as well. We also have a capability to work on compressible fluids. We also have a capability to work with uh, heat transfers. 
this would be one of those examples we'll give a look at uh, in the next uh, uh, presentation i will i will uh, try to take a similar example uh, to make you understand how the uh, electronic cooling module of uh, solidworks shift flow simulation can help you in overcoming uh, the thermal challenges inside an electronic uh, uh, component or any kind of examples applications i mean sorry we can also work on uh, rotating components anything related to rotating components we, we also have a capability to work with uh, rotating components uh, like pumps or compressors or uh, you know, impellers or something like that we can also work on rotating components we also have a capability to work with rotating components uh, we also have a capability to uh, exchange the results from uh, flow simulation to uh, the structural because uh, since solidworks uh, is the only tool uh, which is integrated on a single window platform so uh, the the methodology of converting the outputs from one module to the other module is uh, as easy as having a button have a clicking click at the button at your finger tip like you know i can uh, like for example in the previous slide you have seen uh, with because of the flow what would be the deformations so i can easily you know exchange the results from my you know flow and see what would be the deformations or the stresses coming on the structure because of the only as the flow as a the load onto it we can also work on a non newtonian fluids uh, anything related to non newtonian fluids especially in any kind of medical industries like the flow of blood in any kind of an equipment uh, in the operation theaters you are using or maybe in any kind of food industries uh, like you know apple sausage or honey or something like that now we can also work on a non newtonian fluids we also have a capability to work on non newtonian fluids as well we can also work on uh, time dependent analysis that is a transient analysis so uh, we also have a very good uh, features and uh, uh, tools available to work with uh, you no know, time dependent time dependent analysis we can also work on quite advanced radiation modules uh, we also have a heavy radiation modules available so if you wanted to work on any kind of uh, radiation modules we can also work on uh, an advanced radiation modules as well Uh, so to pile it up in short we have a, a huge capability wise so if you can see uh, the solid works uh, flow simulation we can work on internal flows external flows we can work on heat transfer problems like to summarize whatever we have seen we have a dedicated module for electronics we have a dedicated module for hvac where uh, you know we can target uh, or uh, the challenges where you know uh, you have a huge challenges in the uh, electronic side where to remove the thermal uh, challenges uh, mm -hmm. by means of any kind of applications so we have a huge database for that as well and we also have a good modules like heat pipe modules or joule heating modules and pcb generator modules we also have a module for hvac where we can uh, do a very good uh, study uh, related to the comfort levels uh, we have a you no know, database for comfort parameters as well of course we can work on advanced radiation as well uh, so this is the overview what uh, solidworks flow simulation can offer you come up with the applications of these verticals uh, applications of these tools it has been applicable into lot of industries for solid waste flow simulation you can see uh, electronics uh, 23% valves industry 16% lot of applications like aerospace education transport you know, machinery medical so uh, what not we can we can there are few things uh, uh, you no know, uh, there are a lot of things what we can do a lot uh, in a lot of industries so coming up to uh, the advanced modules uh, we have got electronic cooling and hvac analysis so let us give a look at the electronic cooling because uh, today we are focusing on uh, uh, the thermal challenges related to electronic side that would be the agenda for today's presentation so i'll, I'll take you through a little bit of technical uh, info related to electronic cooling uh, for any other information you can please contact us any time uh, um, 
uh, for any kind of other information like for hvac if you are interested in hvac you can let us know you know we can come down discuss with you and showcase uh, the capabilities related to hvac to you if you are really interested on that so electronic cooling design module it's a industry specific tool uh, where uh, dedicated simulation tools for thermal management studies for electronics uh, department or electronics design side uh, uh, companies who are facing thermal challenges with their products uh, and definitely require a very accurate thermal analysis of their uh, electronic enclosures can definitely uh, get more ben you know uh, can get more benefit out of these particular uh, you know tool is uh, there with the uh, solid works flow simulation then uh, in this particular uh, module we can basically see uh, the engineering challenges uh, to overcome the thermal uh, studies by predicting a better uh, air flow uh, inside the electronic enclosure by making it uh, in a much better way or opt optimized way so that uh, uh, the right amount of uh, ventilation is provided uh, definitely uh, we can see uh, the components which are generating you now more heat and uh, which what it needs is to dissipate uh, to avoid over risking so we can definitely give a look at the temperature as an output we also have a heat sink selections uh, to make it a much better uh, heat sink designs we also have a uh, better uh, fan selections as well so that uh, we can give a look at uh, how the the uh, fan is behaving with respect to to your uh, design whatever we have provided not only this we also have uh, a conjugate heat transfer uh, capability uh, so that uh, we can work on conjugate heat transfers as well we also have a, a very powerful tool called two resistor component models uh, so that we can describe the thermal behavior of the chip you know uh, uh, with uh, with its uh, interconnection with the pcb boards and the environment uh, we have a fully supported two resistor models according to jedec standards Uh, we also have a module for heat pipe compact model uh, one of the definitely one of the most uh, effective heat removal systems uh, we also have a uh, pcb uh, standards we also have a sorry we also have a pcb module available uh, according to your applications so if it is a you know, multi layer pcb is like four layer or eight layer so we can also you know um, uh, define those uh, you no know, layers to give a look at how the the pcb is working out with respect to the uh, the thermal uh, or application point of view we also have a capability for uh, joule heating as well uh, in the joule heating we can uh, uh, include the heat transfer calculations by means of conversion of electricity into your uh, now temperature as an output we also have a huge database for uh, uh, uh the library we have a huge database for the library available uh, for different kinds of materials and of course uh, we have uh, tecs we have uh, you know uh, fans we have solid materials of course you know uh, you have the leverage of uh, you know, customizing your uh, uh, material database you know according to your requirements as well if you want so if i give a go and go and give a look at the the product demonstration uh, i would like to before i start up you know uh, i would like to say if you have any queries you now please you know uh, feel free to uh, uh, put a message to me please feel free message you now feel please feel free to put a message to me so i'll just wait for a for a few seconds to see if someone has any queries still till now or else we can we can we can continue with the the presentation okay i think uh, there are no questions that's good so that means you're following me thanks for that Uh, so let us go uh, with uh, product demonstration related to electronic side i will try try to take a uh, uh, an electronic enclosure to make you understand you know uh, how can we predict the, uh, the thermal behavior inside electronic uh, 
enclosure. So this would be uh, the example what I'm trying to not take now uh, to work on um, to work on for the product demonstration. Uh, for this example, I, I have a requirement saying that there is a chip and the maximum uh, chip temperature allowed is uh, uh, 104 degrees centigrade. So anything more than that is not uh, allowable for me in this design. So now I wanted to you know, make sure that the temperature of the chip is not going beyond 104 degrees centigrade. So for, to make sure that my temperature uh, inside the chip is not going beyond the, the limit, whatever I wanted to give, I have several conditions to work before. So I wanted to give a look at I'm sorry. Please let me know, can you see the screen? Okay. Yes, so uh, to give a look at uh, how the uh, temperature uh, should not exceed uh, beyond uh, 104 degrees centigrade, I wanted to you now play with a couple of uh, my parameters. One is the heat sink design, which heat sink is better for me to uh, maintain the particular uh, uh, temperature of 104 degrees centigrade uh, and whether uh, I have to go with uh, one fan or a two fans and uh, at uh, what would be the location of the fan uh, to uh, to reach that particular uh, optimal temperature or uh, uh, the limited temperature of that particular uh, chip whatever I wanted. So let me quickly take you to uh, the SOLIDWORKS uh, interface. So this is how my uh, SOLIDWORKS uh, flow simulation tab looks like. So once you go up with your uh, design, whatever you have, I can make uh, multiple configurations of the design. So who are already you know, aware of uh, configurations, have made uh, multiple configurations, you can see that. Uh, this is the flow simulation tab. If you can see, this is what we call it as a single window integration. So I can work on a flow simulation right away on my design platform of uh, whatever the design, what I have done. So in the flow simulation, firstly, I go with the setup, what I, go, what I call it as a wizard. So in the wizard, I go and set up the project. Uh, like what would what would be the kind of uh, analysis you wanted to perform. So let me say I wanted to perform, uh, uh, this is with uh, heatsink 3 and uh, one fan. So that would be the name of the study what I define. So if I just go, it's, it's just you know, define the standard set of units, whatever you wanted to work with, define what kind of analysis you wanted to go with internal or external, you wanted to include uh, 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 transient analysis, I can go with uh, no, time dependent if you wanted to include heat conduction of course you know heat conduction in solids plays a very key role and you wanted to you know work with radiation i can also work on radiation modules as well uh, if i go with what kind of you no know, uh, solids or uh, uh, gases you wanted to play with i can define them okay so i can just give the setup accordingly and then proceed ahead so i have just done a simple setup for that so if you can see uh, i have made a uh, setup for that if you can see I have defined uh, my uh, domains and I'm, and I'm trying to define the solid materials because now uh, I'm uh, definitely heat conduction and convection both plays a key role in the electronics so what I've done is uh, 
I've gone ahead and defined all the things. So if you can see, these are the different components what I have. So if I'm trying to expand my tree, so I've defined a few materials. This is made of some stainless steel, which is highlighted in the blue color. If you can see, uh, I have defined a few things with the copper material. Now these are uh, preset standard materials. So I just right click and insert a solid material and uh, if I select the particular property and I go to predefined and choose what kind of uh, you know, things you wanted you wanted to define and so just apply to it. It, it automatically you know, takes up the, those materials. So I've defined a predefined things. So if you can see, I have also defined a PCB which is actually made of a four layer. If you can see, this is a PCB board which is made of four layers. So we can also work on uh, you know, two layers or eight layers also if you want. Uh, let me say you wanted to go ahead and work on any kind of advanced level of PCBs like 16 layers or something like that. Uh, we can also customize the, the PCB uh, you know, properties accordingly to that. So that is basically available in the engineering database. So if I go to my engineering database, so I have got uh, PCBs, PC printed circuit boards. So if you can see if I go to uh, the item properties, you can define uh, the conducting layers, how many number of layers you wanted. So I'm defining uh, the number of layers as four, for example. So the first, uh, the first cover is what thickness and what percentage of copper is defined in it. And uh, second stage and third stage and fourth stage. So I can define my conducting layers in the PCB uh, board. I can customize my PCB board. Not only my PCB board, I can customize a lot of things. So I can have a heat sinks. You can see I have a predefined heat sinks. So if I go to the properties, you know, I have a predefined heatsink. If you want, you can go and make your user defined heatsinks. I've got the predefined fans. I've got a lot of fans in it, Excel fans. So if I just try to expand, you know, huge database, you know, uh, standard fans. So I go to the properties, you know, huge database of the fans. I've got what is going to be the flow rate uh, available for the fans. So basically, this is nothing but fan curve. So not only the fans, I can also have a huge database for my solid materials as well so if i go to materials i've got uh, solids so i've got the predefined values uh, like alloys in the, in the alloys i've got you know, standard materials if you go for building materials i've got you know, uh, building materials as well if you wanted to go for uh, non isotropic sorry polymers i've also also got a material for polymers as well but you can also customize your material properties according to your requirement not only for the solids, we have got materials for the gases, liquids, compressible liquids as well. So just save it and start using it according to your requirement. Okay, so I've defined my solid materials accordingly to that and I'm defining my boundary conditions. Let me say this is the place where I have uh, the opening. So this is just a, nothing but a environmental pressure. So this is nothing but an opening, whatever I have. So are we lacking on the screen, I guess? Okay, I think we are on time now. Okay, so I have defined an environmental pressure. If, if you can see, uh, we ha I have an environmental pressure defined there and I have defined a fan. There is a fan which is you know uh, given out there and this is an uh, outlet fan and uh, I have defined a fan uh, and I have defined the heat resources because for me to understand uh, the, the temperature uh, plots inside, the first thing what I would require is the heat resources. What would be the heat generation rate? from each part. So if you can see I have defined these particular two parts are actually the chip parts which are having a heat generation rate of 10 watts and have got uh, uh, another uh, heat generation rate of 10 watts. I have got another part combined together it is generating a generation of 5 watts each and I have got uh, another uh, product which is generating a temperature which is having a wattage of around 4 watts. So once I have defined the heat sources, the heat main heating components inside, then I am trying to define the goals. What is my maximum uh, you know, temperature which is allowed in it? So the, the goals can be defined in a different ways. I can define by means of surface goals or global goals or uh, uh, volume goals according to your requirement. So here for me, the most important point thing was to have a you know, uh, uh, temperature of the particular chip. So I've gone to ahead and I've defined this particular chip you can see I'm now I've defined this chip I'm trying to find out the temperature of a solid what is the maximum temperature of solid allowed in that chip and of course my maximum temperature in the another uh, solid that is nothing but by another chip okay so that is nothing but my another chip so this would be the major uh, focus for me because my limited temperature allowed is not more than 104 degrees centigrade like what I've mentioned so I define my things 
and I go and I run the study. So once I run the study, you know, I get my outputs accordingly to that. So if you can see my my you know, cut plots, you know, this is nothing but my velocity plot. But I can just quickly come down and say show me the the temperature and say click OK. So it, now it shows me the temperature for me. So if you wanted, if you want me to change the the location of uh, the temperature, what I can do, I can just go. And I can just now you can see this arrow. I can just you now drag up and down. I can say show preview. It automatically updates me according to my location. So if I change it up, so it automatically updates me the value accordingly to that. If I move it down, it updates the temperature values accordingly to that. So I you now I I place my you know component very smartly down there where my maximum temperature is coming up. So if I if I wanted to go you now. Uh, in and check out uh, I can if you can see there this is something which is on the hotspot uh, I can say like show me the maximum temperature on the plot so click on that and show me the maximum minimum temperature on the plot and click on that so on this plot it is somewhere around 130 degrees centigrade so you can see the red hotspot is somewhere close on the chip so it is somewhere close to 130 degrees centigrade so somewhere like that I have if no uh, from that particular uh, no, uh, analysis what I would understand is so the maximum temperature is somewhere going close to 130 degrees centigrade. I can also uh, not. Uh, I can also you know, see the flow trajectories if you want. What I can go and I can just show the flow trajectories. No, I can just uh, you no know, play the trajectories. So you can see basically the fan is sucking in the air from the environmental things and then you know, uh, taking out the hot air out of it. Uh, uh, from it so I can basically see how the flow pattern is actually happening inside my enclosure as well So we can basically give a look at uh, how the uh, the air is you know, moving inside to you know, um, take out the, uh, uh, the heat out of it I can just you know, stop it stop the trajectories the similar way what I have done I have done the analysis for multiple multiple uh, possibilities like whatever I have you know, shown to you before and it's as easy as for me because I don't have to you know, repeat the stuff now what I have to do is just right click and say clone the project and uh, change my fan location accordingly to it so here firstly I have to you know, sucking the air then I have run, run one analysis like blowing the air now I have done another analysis uh, by making uh, my by taking a different heat sink with the two fans. I have done another analysis uh, uh, for uh, heat sink two by taking two fans. So you can see my configuration changing in it. I have also done multiple multiple studies on that. I have done multiple studies uh, now accordingly to that. So once I have done my multiple studies in it. So once I've done my multiple studies in it, I'm trying to find out which would be the, the better uh, you know, study to me. So for example, uh, uh, one of the examples like what I have taken is for uh, no, uh, my temperature goal has to be less than or equal to uh, 104 degrees centigrade. But whereas in one of the studies it reports as you know, 117 degrees centigrade. But whereas if you see in this image I have taken the fan in the middle location. You know, to both the uh, both the heat sinks now then i have gone for two heat sink, two fans uh, then the solidworks reports to me as uh, you know, uh, 108 degrees centigrade uh, with uh, my heat sink 3 uh, in this particular example then what i've gone is uh, gone for a change in the heat sink and then applied for uh, two different fans then it it, it definitely shows uh, temperature way less than what I wanted uh, it is around close to 97.5 degrees centigrade you know? so um, uh, that means it is much lower of course it is good for me but then I wanted to give a look at whether you know, one fan would be sufficient enough or not so I tried with uh, another fan um, you know, uh, location so with, with the different configurations whatever I have shown to you I have worked on that and then try to find out uh, which, which would be the, the better heat sink design uh, and uh, the better fan location for me and what kind of fan I have to you know, work with whether it is a blowing fan or uh, a fan which is throwing air into the electronic enclosure you know, I have to you know, uh, work on multiple configurations on that 
then now uh, coming up to a conclusion saying like this particular heatsink design with uh, one fan which is at the middle of uh, the both the heat sinks can give me uh, uh, a temperature of around 102 degrees centigrade which would be the 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 best uh, combination or the best one what i could uh, you know find out according to the configurations and uh, the heatsink designs what i have got the location of the fans i have got so uh, at the end i could you know uh, definitely come out with the conclusion saying that you know, one fan with uh, heatsink uh, heatsink or you know this particular heatsink can you know uh, help me out in uh, you know reaching uh, getting the optimal design of uh, uh, temperature of uh, value at 102 degrees centigrade. So to, to summarize whatever we have seen uh, now, uh, I could uh, say like uh, uh, solid wood flow simulation can be applicable in lot of industries. If you can see the images, it can be applicable to a lot of industries. But the best point is and uh, uh, it is easy to use right uh, like i mean to say you have got a huge database of materials the environment is not new uh, and the solidworks is well known for its easy user interface and it is still maintaining the same um, interface in whatever the module you are trying to work so the the learning the tool is not a big uh, challenge so the learning curve is definitely a very very small compared to any kind of tool available in the market and of course, uh, since it is integrated with SOLIDWORKS, you know, like what I've mentioned, what if my heat sink you know, is changing? What if my fan location is changing? What if my, you know, you, if you, you know, we also have a good tool for optimization as well. So if you wanted to work with optimization, we can also do parametric study with respect to my design parameters or flow parameters. We also have a very good tool uh, uh, in, uh, in um, electronic called EFD zooming. Now uh, we can now we can we can definitely show a lot more things. There are a lot more tools, a lot more uh, no, uh, uh, tools available so that which can lead to uh, you know, launch your product in a much much faster way. So definitely, uh, uh, SolidWorks Flow Simulation can help you in making uh, you know, uh, better uh, decisions at the design phase so that you can you know, uh, come back and say okay whatever i have taken is the the whatever the changes have done is uh, you know uh, validated or not right at the design phase itself so that's all what i have from my end uh, i would be open for uh, questions uh, for uh, next few minutes couple of minutes so if you have any questions you are definitely free to ask I'm open for questions. I don't see any questions popping out. So uh, I would like to say thank you for your uh, you know, interest and uh, participation in the webinar now let us know if you have any other further information uh, so that we can come back and discuss in much details for you thank you so much